Hello and welcome to our third Teltonica Networks webinar with Leader Computers in Australia. My name is Asha and today I will be introducing you to the Teltonica Networks some of the important features that is failover, load balancing and mobile utilities. Those of you who attended the Root OS webinar will remember me, but for those who are new, I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Asha and I'm a networking and IoT engineer at Teltonica Networks based in Sydney, Australia. I work with our partners in Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Islands to provide technical solutions to their engineering teams. I'm also directly involved in helping clients find the best products for their projects and helping to solve their custom configuration challenges. In our webinars, over the past two weeks, we introduced the operating system root OS, the Teltonica Networks product range, their differences, and each section of the root OS web UI, and followed by remote management system, that is RMS. If you missed either of these sessions, we encourage you to revisit them after today's session on Leader's YouTube channel or online academy. Today, I will be covering three highly useful features of Teltonica network devices that is failover, load balancing, and mobile utilities. Under failover, we'll go over common failover setup examples using Teltonica Networks routers. We'll discuss SIM switching, fail con failover configuration for WAN connections, failover for satellite connections, and the multiple ways to access event reports. Under load balancing, we will go over common load balancing examples, best practices, rules and configuration options and followed by the troubleshooting of failover load balancing services. To finish, we'll discuss a universally useful feature of Teltonica networks, which are the mobile utilities and SMS commands. As we go along, feel free to ask any questions you have in the webinar chat. My colleagues will either answer your question in the chat or if it's relevant to the group, I'll answer it. We'll also leave some time for questions at the end. Failover. Failover is a feature in Teltonica routers that provides a mechanism for automatic switching between different internet connections to maintain network connectivity in case of a primary connection failure. It ensures that your network remains online and accessible even if the primary internet connection becomes unavailable. So here in the picture itself, you can see uh, how the WAN, connection, WAN 1 and WAN 2 connections have been made. Uh, no matter if it is from the same provider or a different provider. Conditions for failover. Failover. Teltonica routers support multiple WAN, that is wide area network connections, such as Ethernet, Wi-Fi, cellular like 3G, 4G, 5G, etc. The router continuously monitors the status and availability of each WAN connection. It checks for factors like link status, network responsiveness, or connectivity to determine if a connection is functioning properly. Conditions for failover. In the router's web-based user interface, you can configure the failover settings. This involves defining the primary and backup WAN connections and specifying the conditions or triggers for failover to occur. These conditions could include criteria like link failure, high latency, or loss of connectivity. When a primary connection failure is detected based on the configured conditions, the router automatically switches to the backup connection. So this ensures uninterrupted network connectivity and devices within the network continue to have the internet access. And once the primary connection is restored or becomes available again, the router can automatically switch back to the primary connection, thus resuming the normal operation. This is known as failback. Here in the screenshot, you can see how the failover interface looks like. When you go uh, click this uh, edit button, you will be able to go into the interface configuration and will be able to do all the configurations that is required. SIM switch for failover. So for routers with two SIM card slots, the question is how can we use these SIMs for failover as except for root x12, no other routers has dual band. For this, we have SIM switch feature where you use SIM with same or different providers. 
This section provides you with the possibility to configure SIM switching rules that is set up circumstances under which the device will perform a switch from using one SIM card to another. Some of those circumstances, as you can see in the above screenshots, are on weak signal, data limit, no roam, on roaming, no network, network denied, etc. Firstly, you need to enable the automatic swim switching. Check the interval. This is the frequency which is in seconds at which the device will check for SIM switch conditions. If such a condition exists, the router will perform a SIM switch and if not, it will check for the same conditions again after the amount of time specified in the field passes. Then select the number of attempts before SIM switch. That is how many times a condition will be checked before executing a SIM switch. So for example, if the device is in a state that meets at least one SIM switch condition, the device will perform a number of additional checks specified in this field and it will perform a SIM switch only if the condition is met on every check. The different circumstances, men circumstances mentioned explains by itself for what they are used for. So for failover, just enable any condition or action, save and apply the configuration and it will perform a SIM switch whenever the event triggers. It's up to you which SIM you would like to keep as a primary SIM. When configuring SIM switching from the secondary card, an additional field call switch back to primary SIM card after timeout becomes available. This will attempt to switch back to the primary SIM card once the specified period of time has passed and you'll, you will be able to see that in the screenshot provided here. Now comes the failover setup examples. Today, almost all businesses can't imagine normal operation without internet connectivity, but relying on a single wired connection isn't the wisest decision because downtime can be extremely costly. So what to do to ensure business connectivity? Even when your primary wired internet source fails, you can always blame it on the internet providers, of course, but that won't solve your problems. Yes, you can keep two wired connectivity providers as a backup, but the best way to solve failover is to have a cellular router for backup connectivity. With cellular backup, you can use mobile data only when the internet from wired sources is lost or is unreliable. This way you save not only your normal business operations, but also money and time. So for example, throughout the years, companies responsible for ATM deployment learn the lesson that single wired connection is just too risky and it can cost more in case of down, downtime rather than implementing cellular connection backup. So nowadays, most ATMs are using industrial cellular routers, sometimes even as the primary source of connectivity be between ATM and central systems of the bank. Such routers must be highly secure reliable and be able to establish VPN connections with advanced firewall functionality as well as support for multiple remote management protocols. So just a simple step to set up this failover on Teltonica Networks router is connect to your router, log in into your router's web UI, click on network settings and then on failover. Choose your primary and mobile internet connection and then turn it on. Click in save, save and apply, that, and there you go. Now the failover configuration. Let's do a small test with the multi-van on with fail, van failover. Firstly, all you need to do, all you need to do is to configure the router for multi-van. Make sure a router has internet access through all the van links. Here in this example, we have Wi-Fi, which is the main van. Mobile is the backup one, and wired van is your second backup. Well, how can you verify this? So all you need to do is to write the CLI command output IP route and check what the primary van is. Here you can see that in the above screenshot. You can also verify it from your interface in the web UI where you can verify the IP addresses of each of your interfaces and you can make sure that it is based on the priorities that you have given. Try to simulate a connection loss for your main van, that is your Wi-Fi van. And now if you try to use the IP route command, you could see the van has switched to backup one. That is your mobile one. Here you can see here written the metric two. 
the metric two we have given as in the above example was mobile sim one and if you log the output you will be able to see something like this to achieve this you could use command log read as well and then if you try to disable the mobile connectivity it will be switched to wired wan which is your backup too you can observe the switching events from the event log as well here in the screenshot you can see where it is given the event type is your failover where the wan mobile sim 1 is down and it is switching to backup wan that is your uh, uh, the wired wan another way where you could use failover is along with your sms events report so here we are going to test sms event reporting with wan failover firstly we will configure the event in rootx11 which will send sms when a router is switched to wan failover and this is how the configuration would look like all you need to do is just to enable the configuration write in the event type to be a wan failover and action send sms you can change that to send email as well add in all the information required and then it is there it is and on the other hand this is how the wan failover con configuration would look like enable them now try to simulate the configuration when the wan failover will occur it will send you a sms notifying that the wan is down and it is now switching to backup wan which is your sim wan in this case here you in the screenshot you can see how the message looks like you can also verify this by checking the events log page in the web ui or you can use the command log read in your cli now failover for satellite connections cellular failover for satellite connections is the process of adding in backup internet source for when the satellite connection fails cellular failover can be set up for a primary sat satellite connection we can use cellular routers or gateways to detect any failures in the satellite connection so these are the most commonly used for homes businesses in remote locations this function is universally necessary to ensure continuity of the service similarly satellite failover can also be set up for a primary cellular connection they are most commonly used for caravanning marines porting etc well satellite connectivity like any other connection type is intermittently unreliable and needs failover anything from atmospheric conditions to physical obstructions can weaken or kill satellite connections sometimes for hours at a time with cellular failover for these satellite connections system can continue to operate even if the satellite connection goes down so here for example let's talk about the configuration of a starlink connection with teltonica routers and 4g connection here what we have done is we have a teltonica router with a 4g sim card and the wan port is been connected to a starlink connection which is connected to a satellite dish all you need to do is install the starlink app check the statistics and verify that the connection is up to try testing you can keep an absorber to disconnect the starlink connection you can also keep the teams call on on the other hand to verify it now how this works is that you take the output of a starlink into the laptop you connect to the wan port of a device such as root 360 or root 240 or any teltonica router and then the output of the pre configured device of the uh, root 360 which is just the lan port which is connected to the laptop what this would mean is that your root 360 is going to be the buffer so it works well it does nothing it just routes the traffic through and then when starlink stops it will try to keep it connected while you are waiting for the starlink to be back online for that you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars all you need to do is to buy a proper device like teltonica routers and a sim card now the laptop is using starlink con connection as it is primary wan connection through th root 360 now try to disconnect the connection by putting that absorber on the satellite even after that you will not lose your internet connection as it will switch over to your backup wan connection that is to your sim 1 and just for the demo you can run the speed tests to see how it actually uses one network and then it uses another network now let's talk about load balancing load balancing is used to efficiently distribute the resources of multiple 
internet service providers on one device among many clients and connections. Therefore, load balancing is usually used to provide better service to an entire network by distributing existing resources, such as the large Wi-Fi network. Load balancing is a way of distributing traffic over multiple connections. It does not bond the connections together, but distributes the available resources among clients and connections. So here, as you can see in the picture, for example, let's take an example in a network with four clients that have established 10 connections to the internet each. Taking a 50-50 ratio load balancing can distribute this traffic equally over two different network interfaces using different ISPs. You can obviously take other ratios as well. Load balancing data speeds will depend on a device's software and hardware capabilities. For example, when using load balancing on a root X12, you may expect SIM 1 plus SIM 2 minus about 15% of it. Now, 15% is just a good factor, an ideal factor for managing expectations. The actual speed value may be both higher or lower depending on the environment of the operation. When load balancing is selected, you can assign ratio values to WAN interfaces. The ratio value represents a percentage of traffic load that will go through an interface. For example, if you set it up like this, you have a wired WAN ratio of 3 and mobile WAN ratio of 2. Then about 60%, that is 3 by 5 of traffic, would go through the wired WAN interface and about 40% would go through mobile WAN. In this case, if you played 100 different videos on the internet, about 60 would be downloaded through wired WAN and the other 40 would be downloaded via mobile WAN. Load balancing and failover rules. A load balancing failover rule is a set of conditions that define some type of network traffic. The a traffic that matches the conditions set in the rule is handled in accordance to the specified policy. There is one default rule present on the device. You can add more rules with the add button or you can customize the existing rule by clicking the edit button next to it. Policy. Under failover load balancing rules in the web UI, you'll notice a column for policies. You can edit policies by clicking on the edit button to access the pop-up shown. This feature is rarely used, but it is helpful in scenarios where specific customizations are needed. A policy dictates what the device should do when some network traffic matches the condition defined. In a failover load balancing rule, there are two policies by default, which you can see in this slide. Under this section, you can also create custom policies that use different interfaces for failover load balancing scenarios. For example, you have a default connection set up in failover interfaces, but you have an instance where you need specific IP addresses to prioritize a different primary connection. You can use custom policies to set this rule by adding the source and destination IP address and adding a new instance. So just a technical note, rules and policies are different from each other. As we discussed, rules describe what traffic to match and what policy to assign for that traffic. And policies define how traffic is routed through the different WAN interfaces. Troubleshooting the failover and load balancing. So we have different ways. Obviously, you can download the troubleshoot files from the web UI when you go into the administration. Another way you can do is by using the service via VCLI. You can do configured globals, which is in a rare cases that we used. Then we have active interfaces plus the configuration. Then we have active M mobile uh, multi van mode that is failover or load balancing through which you can check. Then we have is configured rules. What rules you have configured, what policies you have configured. Based on these things, you can observe how the configurations and everything is and you can troubleshoot your service. We may observe all of these configuration options in the web UI, except for the global section. So this global section resides in the configuration file and cannot be modified by any web UI. 
so according to this documentation the globals are setting are the settings that apply to all multi van services multi van has its own available cli commands as well to check on the current status of the service so we have all these cli commands where you can check as well and other than that you already know that we have the troubleshoot file as well let's talk about mobile utilities now the mobile utilities page is used to configure various sms and call related device control options and to read send and manage sms messages and sms storage so storage space the sms utilities section contains a list of rules that perform certain actions when they are activated by sms messages the entire list contains like more than 20 rules but it does not include all possible sms actions you can also create custom rules or modify existing rules all possible sms rule actions that default as sms texts some of those actions are changing the input output state changing profile changing sim switch changing mobile settings sending status etc to execute an sms rule send an sms message to your device's sim card number with the rules sms text preceded by the selected authorization keyword which depends on the selected authorization method you can edit the authorization method for an action by clicking on the edit button now what are those authorization methods firstly we have no authorization where you don't need any special keyword is required simply send a rule sms text in in the example shown here we execute the reboot rule without any authorization then we have is by serial here you need to include the device's serial number before a rules sms text so for example we execute the io status rule just with a serial authorization before it then we have third is the admin password in it here you need to include the device's password so this is the password that is the web ui password that you have created after you get into the device web ui and then followed by the sms text in the example shown here we execute vpn rule with an admin password authorization and another is we have by password where you include the configured custom password before a rules sms text for example we can execute the ssh on example rule with password authorization the different authorization methods are there for added security when performing certain actions you should set up the appropriate authorization action based on the sms commands you are using but by default teltonica networks device will require the admin password for sms command authorization call utilities call utilities provide you with the possibility to issue certain commands to the router from your mobile phone the list of possible rules is of course shorter because you can only make one type of call keep that in mind when creating call utilities rules because one call will trigger all of the enabled rules at once well when it comes to configuration all you need to do is enable the call configuration select the action you need like reboot get status turn mobile data on or off etc and then save and apply the config call rules to create a new rule select an action and click the add button after this the configuration window would appear next we have is incoming calls this specifies the action to be performed on incoming calls call utilities rule will keep getting executed while the call is active sms messages with the help of this window you can read and send the sms messages in the read messages section you can read and delete received or store sms messages the layout is simple there is a list of received sms messages and you can choose how many entries of that list should be visible at one time with sms per page drop box in the top left corner of the page and there is a search field to help you navigate more efficiently through the list of messages in the top right corner of your page the send sms messages section lets you send messages from the router's sim card so that covers most of what you will need to use what you need to use is failover load balancing and sms utilities with teltonica networks devices if you would like to more we encourage you to get certified 
we have in-depth certification programs for our clients to help them succeed with our products. Level 1 and Level 2 Certified Technical Training are a three-day interactive training programs that involve going through our product range, root OS, RMS, use cases in detail. Feel free to write training in the chat window now if you would like to find out more about Teltonica certification. Thank you. And if you have any questions about any of the topics discussed, please send your questions through now. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. This is Alex from Leader. Just to quickly ask some of the questions that came through during the, the course of this. Um, so one of the questions that came through is, uh, can you have multiple recipients for SMS alerts? Multiple recipients. Yeah, I mean, you can add in the recipients itself, but when it comes to adding, there is should be an option. Just let me check. Uh, If it's something we need to loop back to, we can do that as well. Or alternatively, if you have it in front uh, of you. Yeah, I'm just like showing them directly over here from the SMS possibility. You mean in sending in the messages, right? Or yes, correct. So when file lover occurs, is it possible to have that SMS go out to multiple recipients? No, we don't have in this option. But if you're talking about events reporting, it should have. We have this as well. Here, as you can see, if you send email, all you need to do is just to select the uh, plus button and you need to add in the information. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much it's for easy. that. Yeah, no matter it's for email or SMS. And then there's another question that came through here. Uh, can you see the status of a router if it's using the failover link through RMS? Through RMS? Uh, I think you can because there is an option of create alert and you will be able to in in the rms itself there is an option of create alert so you'll be able to get an uh, sms saying that uh, your device is online has went offline or online or it's going to change yeah you'll be able to or else if not you can definitely go to your web ui via I, 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 via your rms and you can have a look through okay and, and then we have the last SSH, like remote sorry okay well. Okay, yes. perfect. Uh, last question that came through here. Uh, do the Teltonica devices introduce any overheads, I think they mean in terms of speed, uh, that impact total throughput availability when using load balancing? So that, is there an impact um, from the device that you're using on your total throughput availability if you're using load balancing? Well, uh, do you mean like if you have a like bandwidth limit and then when you're using load balancing with that? I th yes, so I think the the question refers more to if the device, uh, the RUT device introduces uh, any overheads when using load balancing. Uh, no, 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 not really. No, we don't okay. have anything. If you, unless and until if you add in some throughput and then you are using load balancing, and no, else we don't have it. Okay. No, um, perfect. So that's all the questions that came through. If you guys still have any questions, please feel free to post them through now. Also, please don't run 